Thank you for coming. What we're going to deal with today is looking at the, the heart chakra again, as we have before, under the off species of looking at the heart center. And this particular faculty is all important towards your development. Much that happens that blocks your development happens because of the desires of our hearts. To become aware of it and to gain a particular <coughs> technique of ridding oneself of the karma that imposes itself on the heart center as well as other spiritual centers is to gain a quantum leap past just meditating. We'll deal with that technique in a while. For those of you who claim to be Hebrew, let me put a bit of a damper on your religious terminology. It, it, it's a Greek word. Sorry. <laughs> and it's spiritual meaning is her whip. We already dealt with this. That's on the tape. That's where we're starting. So we'll repeat a few things. The zodiac is her whip. That is Zudikias, the great mother. The mental universe is first, then the physical universe. What we need to become aware of is that we live in a mental universe. And in that mind of God, we're able to have and make effect to change our circumstances, to change our world, to erase that which we do not want, and to legislate mentally that which we do want, and to gain access to the power of being who you really are, Lord of the earth, the more. The Hebrew children are the 12 signs of the zodiac. I'm going to point that out here <coughs> in the good old Bible, this full of knowledge. Hiram the artisan, this is uh, 1 Kings 7.13. Mark that down so when you get home where your Bible is, you can read it. <laughs> now King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tira. He was a widow's son. Okay. Very important spiritual and codex in scriptus key. He was a widow's son. Which means the widow is his mother. He has no father. That's important to understand the nature of the physical man. The physical body is feminine. It is made in your mother. It is made in your mother in nine months. In a solar system of nine planets. where the child is balled up in a ball of 360 degrees, which is nine. The reason I keep reiterating this is because of the terrible disrespect we are showing to the black woman. And since that awful behavior Transpired, we have been going absolutely nowhere. If you really want to look, okay. you can't do that to the representative of divine love in the universe. The first symbol of universal love is the black woman because she's the first woman. Secondly, she's the female principle. And love is the female principle. Universal love, the law of attraction, is what is stated in the Kibali. As long as we're missing the point about the mother and her son, we're going to have this chaotic behavior that we keep seeing, particularly in our children, which are a reflection of our thinking. That's very important to understand. 
They are a reflection of our thinking. That they're not to be held accountable for all of their insanity. Insanity is learned, just like good manners are learned. If children don't learn good manners, they can't perform them. They perform what they learn and what they know. If they have no love in their lives, in their homes, <coughs> then they can express love. Rape is, is a terrible, desperate expression of love. As foolish as that is. A terrible, desperate attempt to express love. Isn't that awful? The theme that made us great is not heavy, brilliant, it, it, it's, it's love and wisdom. That, that's what made us great. The, the symbology of so-called Egypt is what represents the spiritual man, Miss Arayim. We won't go into that now. Who is the more? That's the Hebrew word for more, so-called Hebrew. Lord of the earth. That's your ethnocentric name. And, and I keep throwing it out and I'll keep doing it until it hits center in your consciousness that that's who you are, Lord of the earth. And it's important to become Lord of the earth because of what the earth is. That, that's the earth your lord up. Now you either its master or either its bond servant. That's important. If you wonder what, if you're wondering what we're doing down here, John chapter 10 verses 31 to 36 holds the answer. On the way to that spiritual conceptualization, I didn't mean to start back this way, but I guess I need to. I see quite a new, few new faces here. What you are seeing me do here with these concepts is called both anagrammatic writing, which is a technique of ancient Moorish science, which is now in, in and under the auspices of Masonic science. That, that costs you about a grand to get the first degree. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there, there are some benefits in it. If anyone is interested in that, I, I don't knock it. Lord of the Earth. You will find that in Genesis chapter 29 verses 30 and 33 in the symbological reading of Joseph and his brothers. In the symbological reading of Joseph and his brothers who became a governor which is one of the meanings, definitions of the word more or moros or mors. This is anagrammatic writing. Look at this word. Lord of the heart. That's your spiritual definition. Jesus was called the Lord of heaven and earth. Heaven is your mind. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. That's what we're looking for. Not, 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 not to binge Rodney King. You know, and as stupid as that stuff they're doing was. And I say that because I want to refocus your attention on what's important, that you become God. That is what is important. Okay, now, not to vindicate someone who is off track. It's in just as it was. Don't, don't let it consume you. And thought will consume you. <laughs> okay, thought. That's what we saw in Los Angeles. Thought consumed black folks. Anger is one's weakest point. There's absolutely no strength in anger. Not at all. Okay. Let me go on here. I don't want to 
drag along here. But this information we're dealing with now is a part of the first 12 weeks, but it's also intricately tied in with Hebrew and the 12 signs of the zodiac. These are the glyphs or symbols of those 12 signs. I want to finish reading this. He was a widow's son from the tribe of Nephthali. And his father was a man of Tirah, a worker in bronze. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and skill for doing any work in bronze. So he came to King Solomon and performed all his works. And he fashioned two pillars of stone, the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative. Jokfan and Boaz, the male and female principle called the two pillars, the two principles of duality, which is what the zodiac, Zodiacus, measures. We live in duality. We live in good and bad, soft and hard, light and dark, poor and rich, brilliant and stupid. We're trying to get past that, hopefully to the point of the pyramid, above both good and evil. That's the goal. The reason I'm mentioning this again is because you're not going to hear your, your preachers say this. Maybe a few, because there's some who are waking up, fortunately. And that's very important. Life uh, can seem very useless to a young boy with no money, no job, no clothes. How can he define himself if he doesn't have the things that he believes to be important? Men, know thyself. That's what our ancient fathers taught. Self-knowledge. And to thine own self be true. That self, that that particular axiom or maxim, is referring to is the higher self, the invisible you, where the power is, where the light is, where the knowledge is, where the miraculous power is waiting dormantly, sleep in your vessel, as Jesus slept in the vessel of Peter. Let me go on with this here. There's quite a bit of astrology in this. And he fashioned the two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of one pillar, and a line of twelve cubits measured the circumference. There's your twelve cubits. Eighteen cubits. Equals nine. There are nine planets. Of course, they're claiming that there are ten planets, and they may well be the but Twelve were called out. There are 14 constellations in our universe, but 12 are called out or used to measure the nature of the Son of God. Ephesians 4, 13. Towards the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to the measure of slip right out of my mind into the measure of the anybody to finish that for me to the measure <coughs> they'll come back to me it just kind of slipped away now. to the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ to the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ this is the whole man the twelve parts is the whole man awakened on the glandular level first, those are the twelve apostles, your spiritual glands. You've already dealt with those. Now we're talking about the particular organs and how they play a spiritual part in our awakening. We're going to begin with Leo. Okay, I don't want to belabor this here, so but just all the way from... Uh, 1 Kings 7, 13 to 1 Kings 7, 26. I'll give you the message of the 12 signs of the Zodiac in representation of the widow's son, Hiram Abiff, who is uh, 
in Masonic lore, the one that they killed and buried him in a shallow grave. But as I pointed out, the spiritual aphorism of Pastor Gaffis is not based on the Persian culture, but the African culture. The black man is buried in a shallow grave in the East. I'm aware of what I did with that particular illustration. I'll be back in the back from my Well, we'll get a look at it later. Okay. I'm going to bypass the numerology so we can get right into this knowledge of the heart chakra and the sign of Leo. The heart chakras are located in the book of Revelations, whether they are species of the seven seals. First thing we recognize is that what tells us that the entire book of Revelations is talking about the inner man is two factors. One, the little book has seven seals on the back of it. First, the back. Secondly, he's told by the angel to take the book and eat it, put it inside the sweet in his mouth and bitter in his stomach. From Revelations 1 to 22 is all symbology. Understanding symbology. Symbology begins inside. Then it comes outside. We need to, to understand that. If we wonder why all the mystery about the book of Revelations has kept most Christians afraid even to turn to the book, let alone read <laughs> So, what we're doing now is taking each spiritual chakra one by one and looking at it and working on it. This is not an intellectual approach. We want to do some changing while you're here and to have a methodology where you can go on changing your life. That's the kind of knowledge we need. That is what makes knowledge power that it changes you, and it raises you up. Very important, we, we're getting to this level where we become very intellectually heavy. You know, and, and, and it's impressive. You know. but we're, we're doing the same thing again, developing an intellectual elitist you know, who stand off and go through this stuff, and we don't need that. You know. We need to get raised up. So we know what we're talking about and what we're doing. The first point of that in terms of the central theme in all of the scriptures on this planet is you as becoming God. That's it. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with Leo, the lion, his majesty. And as everyone knows, except the, those that are into Hebrewism uh, under the impression that this line of Judah is not African. I mean, that's the way it, it, it appears to me, that he's something other than African. The line of Judah. It, this is a symbol. It, it represents Leo one of the sons of Jacob, or and the son of Israel. Israel, Isis, Ra, the son, Eel, God, Israel. 
We're talking about the sun within yourself. Keep that in mind. The whole book is in reference to informing you how to become God. That is what Jesus taught. He preached the good news, but he taught God as the rest of the masters taught God Okay. How many Leo we got in here? What, just one? Two? That it? Two Leo. Wow, man, I ain't attracted nothing. I'm sad. <laughs> so, cool Leo. Very <laughs> good. Dynamic, I think, is the, the first concept that we get for Leo. The high energy of Leo, which is a, one of the triplicity of fire. Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. Those are the three fire signs. They find a harmonious relationship very easily. Leo can look back and see that many of his friends or her friends are Leo, are Aries and Sagittarius. Or they have Sagittarius or Aries rising, which is a very important part of astrological compatibility. What we're doing is looking at the human personality and the human organ so we understand its interconnection with the spiritual man because you live in your body. And you should understand that. And you relate to human beings in their bodies. And you can know something about them before you meet them. Just as after you've met them, divorced them, shot at them, <laughs> run them over, <laughs> figure out why they did all that dumb stuff and figure out why you did it. <laughs> Self-knowledge. Part of the problem. We don't know who we are. We don't know who that is sleeping next to us. We don't know who our children are. And that's absurd. To, for a parent to say, boy, I don't understand you, is a reflection of his own ignorance, his own child, and not the child's problem. Self-knowledge. Not who that is. You gave him a name, mama gave him a name, or grandmama, somebody gave him a name. Automatically, self-knowledge was, at that point, beginning to be revealed. He has a birth date that he can't change. He can change his name, but he can't change his birth date. What does that birth date mean? That's the kind of positive self-image psychology we are missing. The European conceptualization of astrology and its delineation is essentially based on Euro-ethnic features and characteristics. Yeah. I don't know if you've read any astrology books or not. They give this descriptive that he had pale complexion as a Leo and uh, bluish eyes. Most Leos have blue. What are they talking about? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's what we've been subjected to in, in, in the rendering of knowledge by the European as he interpreted our identity all, 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 all to the side. I want to read this uh, short segment here on uh, Leo. This book is a, a very helpful book because it deals with the birth signs and the cell salts. I'm going to mention something about the cell salts. Uh, What's the name of that book? Uh, the Zodiac and the Salts of Salvation. Very interesting idea. Because Perry Carey points out that the body plays a vital part in your spiritual development. If you damage the body, you can't get your spirituality to function in its full maturity. So it's important to take care of your body. And if you're going to take care of your body, it's important to, to know something about your body. You know, it's, it's not a mystery anymore. You know, we're, you're born in a specific time, a specific time of day, a specific hour, month, and year. That, that, that's very exact. It's the exactitude of mathematics. Very real. So one way you study yourself. <coughs> One of the contributions of Noel Drelli in his little pamphlet. Brother man, when you study yourself, go back and study yourself again. Because we are three dimensional. Spirit, mind, and body. The old so-called martyrs, they, they were probably very psychologically damaged, the ones that beat themselves and starve themselves to death trying to get some 
moral control over their sexual drive. And all they do is go out and find a woman to marry to get back on the spiritual path. And became some of the biggest perverts the Catholic Church ever presented. And they were in the hundreds of thousands because they didn't know what they were doing. The reason I'm starting with uh, Leo is because it is a symbol of the heart, love. And inside of this heart center, now, don't, my advice is don't try to meditate on the written symbol you see on these charts. That, that may not be how your chakras look at all. Let your spirit reveal your chakra. By Concentrating to concentration to contemplation to self realization. That's the process. On the light. That's your point of focus in this level of meditation. There is a heart center inside of this heart center. There are 12 petals, according to most astrologers, in their metaphysical rendering of the 12 signs of the zodiac that represent the energy emanating from the heart center. They're not petals as such, but they do make a perfect geometrical structure. Inside of the heart chakra, at the point of realization, the legend is you will see the six-pointed star. As long as I put that in the legend, that, that, that's up to you to find. <coughs> the geometrical definition and meaning of the six-pointed star is that your energy from the heart center goes out in all points throughout the body. That's how you master the earth or turn the earth into the perfect heart, you become the Lord of the heart that makes you God. It is love that transforms us to God. There are other levels, of course, as we already dealt with. The man, master, able and noble. The first man is the womb man. I like to say that because it usually shocks the sisters. But it's very important to, to, to know that. The, the, the male is the reverse of the female. That's how he got his nature from his mama. Well, and, and we need to understand that. Because love and devotion does not belong to a God out off somewhere that you don't even know and then turn and hate your brother whom you can see and do know. <laughs> it makes no sense, does it? But it's going on because we have the wrong perspective about who we are. So it's very difficult to concentrate on the diamond by looking at the rough. If we think that's a nigga out there drunk, peeing all over himself, ain't about nothing, then that's what he is. We don't see the fact that he's just as much of a soul and a god as any one of us. And believe me, that ain't easy. The problem, again, is the power that's missing that tames the wild beast, the ass, in terms of Jesus riding into Bethlehem. When you have power over the physical body, that body, that person can't harm you. And there's nothing to fear. The power over fear is what? Is what? Okay, but what's the other? Perfect love casts out what? All fear. You're right about pain. <laughs> that's, a little, that's a little deeper. But we want to deal with fear because much that misdirects us is based upon our insecurity, our uncertainty, our self-doubt, our fear about next week's rent, next week's car note, next week's rent. And we have this wonderful ability to project all of this stuff out into the future. Lord, what am I going to do about next week, next month's uh, car note? And just pay the car note this month. It's amazing, you know, how we do that, how, how we 
strive so hard to become the prophets of doom. And then turn around after it. We mess it up. See, I told you. I knew it was going to happen. So I knew that was going to You're right. <laughs> you put it out there. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, the very thing that I fear the most has come upon me. We need to understand that. Usually I don't talk about the problem because my point of concentration, here's a seat here, young lady. The point of concentration is on the positive. But stuff is in your way. <laughs> okay. Stuff that you cannot see with the physical eyes is in your way. What did I do with that car? I think I that. ideas of morality seem to be a spiritual problem because they're real and they have energy, negative energy. Here's the concept, samskara. This is what kills us. It gets on your spiritual center. So you don't get the correct impulse to do what you have to get the right thought. You get promelled by negative drives and negative energy. Samskara is everywhere negative thinking is. It dwells in the air. You can walk through a community, and it's like walking through water, you get covered by someone else's negative energy. It is a dead, black, pasty substance. I meant to bring a match to show you what it looks like. It's important to understand this because Sam Scott kills. Okay, thank you. And what we're going to do is learn how to remove Sam Scott from our spiritual centers. Very important. If you have your growth center open, you can remove it with the power of the spoken word. And that's how real Christians those that were spiritually mature were able to cleanse their heart. All right. I didn't mean to burn myself up here. <laughs> okay, that's a general idea. That's what it looks like on your heart center. Now, the reason I know this is because the Spirit showed it to me. I was sitting in a, the first time I saw it was on somebody else. I just found out about it a week before. And I was sitting in this cafeteria, this deli, and this girl came in and sat by me. She went to winking and blinking and <laughs> going to her thing. You know, she didn't got hot and come in and chose me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sitting here, she was sitting over there. And the spirit showed me the top of her brain. These big 
black blobs of shiny paste on her brain. Then I started working with this technique and I felt this tremendous collapse of stuff in my heart fall by using the technique that I'm going to give you. There was a brother here who had Sam Scar on his penile gland. I don't think he's come back. That, that, that's what does the killing. That's what slows down your spiritual development. That's what allows you to get set off into wild, crazy, ignorant behavior. This stuff, this death, that is referred to in the scripture as the seven deadly sins. It's real, and you can remove it. Okay, okay let me get a little bit more information here on Leo. The sun overflows with divine energy. It is the brew pot that forever filters and scatters the elixir of life. All of us have the sun in our sun. One of the other reason I started with Leo. That, that's how you get here in, in terms of the position of the planets at the time of your birth. The sun is in your sun. So the sun is the energy that sets off the physiological impulse of life. When the, when the baby in the embryo is on the way, way out and his little fists go, uh, he's given a shock. His hands open. Then he's born. And he, and the doctor doesn't have to beat him up to get him to come out of there. You know, that's a, a Eurocentric I mean, a childhood. The sun is the vital energy for all of us. But the major impulse of life that palpitates in the heart. We're measuring the pulsation of the sun's energy in our body. The sun within each one of us in the solar plexus. Okay? Whatever is outside is inside. Whatever is above is below. The law of correspondence. We need to understand that. Okay, that, that, that's how you, you you best understand the spiritual inheritance that you already have. If your spiritual talent, along the way, someone gets blessed and, and says, "The Lord has blessed me and given me the gift to to prophesy." And so you look at that chart and find out the brother has been a, a prophet for the past six lifetimes. <laughs> you didn't know it. That, that, in my estimation, was Michael Luther King, who changed his own name to Martin. He was a modern-day prophet who didn't get there because he really didn't know who he was. I don't even know. Okay. Let's look at some more parts of this. These are the positions of the nine planets. The one we're talking about is here. This is, um, this is a very complex uh, graph here. I don't even want to try to get into this. That, okay, the thing is that, again, not to do the, the heavy intellectual dip, you know, so I sound like I'm, I'm really hope for this really heavy. <laughs> well, it doesn't look about nothing, believe me. It, uh, this is the chart, and it's circular growth and development of the embryo. If we, we grow and move in circle, that, that, that's how you gain power, how you move from level of evolution to level of evolution. This way is a cycle. This way is a circle. Okay? Do, re, mi, lati, do, re, mi, fa, that's what the European is doing. <laughs> Since in enough back, from do back to dope. <laughs> we find it, you know. Back to oh man, thing. look at that brand new car. Oh wow. Yeah, old metal, new paint. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's doing. The thing is, is not to knock it. Is don't let it master you. That, that's what I'm talking about. Don't make your car better than your girlfriend. 
You can't be getting in my car with them clothes on. You know, I've heard that one myself. So we get some clear perspective about divinity, about Godhood, about spirituality, about power to change things, to heal people, to get some insight, to help that young ninth grader get from the ninth grade to the twelfth grade with a certain amount of inserted self-knowledge and confidence, phonius, faith, faith in himself. We all believe in God. We all have great faith in God. We don't have any faith in ourselves. It's a problem. It's not God. Okay. Let me get back to this. July the 22nd to August the 23rd is the 30 degrees of Leo. Well, you got a leading wind here, man. Huh? We got two of them in here. July the 22nd? Yeah, we got two of them in here. Okay, well, that's me, too. I, didn't, I, I thought I was always August. cancer. August. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. August. July the 22nd. To, oh, there are two systems. There's the heliocentric system, the sun system, and the geocentric system when the Earth is placed in the middle of the zodiac. So they're two different systems. You can tell that once you study your sign by your own behavior, which sign you are. I'm a typical Sagittarius. <laughs> You know, sometimes to my detriment, but that I'm very much that And when were you born? November the 29th. Okay, Leo is ruled by the sun, and the children of that celestial sign are natural sun worshippers. That's a European kind of gets entangled. <laughs> I mean, uh, seriously, I mean, they got a thing now that looks like a coffin of light that they get in you know, to get some dark brown stuff. Right. Yeah. We busy running around talking, yo, black man. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just stupid stuff we do. It's just stupid stuff. It tears up our world and keeps shaving down the natural prestige we're supposed to have one for another because of who we are, what we are, and where we are. It isn't about money. It's not about having a big house. It's got to be about your spiritual status. It's got to be about, about the knowledge that you have about each one of us based upon our ethnocentricity from whence we came. That's important because that's how you give back respect. Real people consume their birth salts more rapidly than they consume any of the other salts of the blood. Okay, the, the birth salt of Leo, phosphate of magnesia. The cell salt is the building blocks of the body. That's why it's so important. When something is broken, snagged, torn, or ruptured in the body, and the cell salt, if there's enough of it in it, in the body, comes forward and repairs that. I give this wonderful little example I had. Where someone told me about the cell salt. And I went and got mine. Here it is here. This, this is mine. This is all 12 of them. Went and got mine and uh, took the cell salt and then went to work. And I had these two cuts at the edge of my mouth. And when I got to work, Around two, one or two o'clock, I reached up to scratch, and it didn't hurt. And, and I took my hand, and, and then it closed up. But from the previous night, around seven to eight, to approximately two o'clock in the afternoon, that's how quickly my cell salt healed my body. That's how important it is. I suspect, not being a chemist, that what is missing in the dietary makeup of the African man and woman is his or and her cell salt in large enough quantity to help you make a new body that's a strong and perfect new body. Every seven years, we make a new body. You have a new body. If you're over 21, three times seven is 21. You're now working on your third new body. If you've been taking care of it, it should be a stronger, and more perfected body this cycle around than it was the previous cycle around. If you've added to the 
physiological structure, your spirituality, spiritual substance. Here's where the heart chakra comes in. Now what, uh, uh, this other writer talks about, yeah, I don't see the book up there, not the chakra, and chakra, uh, another book. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not important. What's the name uh, is that, uh, in the heart chakra, as to whether you are doing anything spiritual or not, unless you are damaged. By that I mean you, you, you're constantly bending the elbow with the booze or hitting the good ganji every day. It just really tears up the spiritual body, the etheric body. It really tears it up, particularly with all this melanin in our blood. Yeah. You want to know what, what, what's got you frustrated and full of anxiety? It may well be that. I'm not accusing you of anything. But that's, that's a problem. Okay. In this center here, this center opens up, and there's another center inside that emanates energy from your astral and etheric and body of light. Okay. All this energy comes through the chakras. The other energy comes through the glands, the 12 powers of man. Every seven years, you move into a cycle of seven as to whether you're doing, if you're doing halfway right, you'll get some help from your higher self. If you're doing halfway right, if you ain't sleep and dead, you know, like many of the black folks are, you have the slightest idea what's going on. Because of the cycle itself, it simply produces energy for you to keep you alive. That's what keeps you alive, is spiritual energy, not neck bones and rice. Don't get it. We are spiritual beings in a spiritual body. As dense as it is, it is still a spiritual body. You are all spirit, vibrating at different rates of speed. That's the only difference between you and Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, and other masters on the higher plane. They are vibrating at a higher rate of speed. Their spiritual centers are open. They have their crown, their soul, and their kutalini in alignment. The two O's. Because this is what we're going to be talking about in terms of, I don't know, you know, some of y'all are heavenly beings and you've been up there. We, we're not talking about that. We're talking higher. Omnipotence, omnipresence, omniscience, all knowledge. That's what we're talking about. Supreme consciousness. That's what we're shooting for. <coughs> That's what's available to the human race in this dispensation, this cycle, to get it all done. So if you choose to come back down here, you come down here as master, not as servant. Johnny says, you've been coming down here no more as a, as a minister. So come out here and have some fun next time. Because it takes a lot out of her. That's kind of a, a statement of frustration. We're, we're probably the hardest people to re-educate. <laughs> so much stuff has been thrown in our way about who that is in your mirror. <laughs> That's a real problem. It is who that is in your mirror. It's what's got our heads going zigzaggy ab about through these multiple stages of ambivalence. You like him, you don't like him, you like her, you don't like her, you hate him, you hate him. Back and forth, back and forth. That, that's the human subconscious mind, the human ego. That's, there's no concentration in it. That, that's not focused. That, that will take you off the wheel of good and bad. You try to get up here. 
the perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. That, that's the meditative posture. You don't see any good, any bad. And you know what you're doing at all times. That's God. Anything less than that is nothing but psychic phenomenon. God is, is good. The, the law is good and bad. <laughs> The law is the Lord. I am the Lord doing both good and evil, says Isaiah. I think it's chapter 14. Uh, that's, that's interesting. Did anyone see... Let me divert here because this really disturbed me. This group of kids that Jerry Springer had on his show the other day, these uh, uh, white supremacist adolescents who hate all Jews, and their parents have explained this dumb stuff to them so that they're all going they're waiting for, the, for their God Yahweh these are Europeans you know, <laughs> waiting for their God Yahweh to give them the word so they kill all Jews and they don't care about black folks they just want them to go back to their home it was interesting I went from 9 years old to 14 and, and you could see the psychological derangement in these children Mind, as uh, Jerry Springer tried to bring them to a rational level of understanding that, that God is love. No, no, God, God, is, God is hate. Fourteen years old. So amazing. But what bothered me was not so much that they were talking about God as Europeans. The children in the audience, which a large percentage of them were black, had no ready information to come back the dumb stuff except for the emotional answer. They didn't have any self-knowledge. Yeah. That, that's what bothered me. The, the kids start getting angry, which means that, that you're stopping to think. <laughs> and if you're angry, you can't intuit. Spirit can't reveal anything to you if you're angry. And it was insulting. I mean, I understand the level of anger. But they should have had answers in, in the same Bible. And one of the white kids said, well, uh, God doesn't say anything about black people in, in the Bible about African doing anything. Steve, this is 1993. You know, if you wonder where this crazy stuff, why this crazy stuff keeps coming up, because someone is miseducating their children. The thing I'm concerned about is the re-educational process of the African child, not, not to be ignorant in, in, in the day of love. That's my real question. Okay, what time is it? Five by seven. seven. Okay. Oh. chakra, the sun. The function of that chakra is inner identity. Inner identity. I'm just going to draw three little mannequins here and I want to get fancy. One level. of your spirituality, your astral body. Your etheric body, which is lighter than your astral body. And the body of light on the plane of cause, on the plane of causation, where you go up to that plane and set something in motion that you want in motion. That's where you change things on the higher plane, on the plane of causation, in your causal body, the body of light. What you speak from there must be done. That's where you're trying to get to. 
Those are all enfolded within you. At a certain point, your spirit will just show them to you. They're there. If you meditate. The physical correspondent is the cardiac artery, which is very important because everything down here is seemingly after the cardiac. I mean, you know, the stress level, you know, sending young brothers off with heart attacks. James Stewart, perfect example. Drop dead on the basketball court on material sclerosis. 23 years old. It wasn't pork. It wasn't meat. It was sugar. I killed him. Big shoulders, broad chest, looked like Samson. All his stuff was clogged up. The, the coroner said his body Looked like that of a 57-year-old man. Doing sugar. What were they? And I think they're still drinking. They take 99 cents and they get one of these gallons of sugar water. Red, purple, blue, orange, you know. Ain't no food in there. Ain't nothing never sugar. And sugar eats up your vitamins, your B vitamins, your brain transmitters. Eats up your C. The, the biggest problem that's combating us dietarily sugar. If you can get rid of sugar, you shall not to move the devil. <laughs> sugar is deep. But if you can get it wrenched out of your body, you, you, you'll find some spontaneous spirituality happening. I agree with Perry that there is a certain level of spirituality that will happen in a good, strong, physical body. But, but you're not going to wake up to supreme consciousness just because you're eating right, okay? you got to work. And then you need somebody up there on the higher plane to pull you up there. Because if you go up there by yourself, you're going to come back with a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's important to understand. You have to be invited to certain higher planes. If you're not, you're in serious trouble. If there isn't anything free, you've got to earn it. The only thing that's really free it is yourself who is under the illusion that you are a slave. Because you know, we call it all kind of things. I'm uh, president of the plumbing company, and uh, of course I, uh, I work 85 hours a week. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? A slave. That isn't what you're doing. You're supposed to be doing that. Working yourself to damn debt to some white boy and get rich and send the money you help him get, make rich, so that his ch his children will grow up and be rich. Does that make sense to anybody in here? Because that's what they've been doing, particularly in the South. Buckhead is old slave money. That's old slave money. The invitation is to get up here where prosperity is. The universe knows you, and the universe owes you a living. Understand that. <laughs> That's prosperity. The universe knows you. The universe owes you a living because you're here. <laughs> but you're believing everything but the fact that you're the Son of God. You have to earn your living by the sweat of your brow. And I know some of us tired of doing that one. So we're trying to get up to prosperity consciousness where you can accept a blessing from the universe. Just accept it. So, like, like the brother uh, uh, to pick up the basketball and win. Oh, <laughs> and accept it. 50,000 a year. 20 years. The brother can walk around like this. <laughs> no, nobody, no time. I hope that fool's gonna keep that dumb job he got. Yeah, I hope he's that intelligent. You know, one of the newscasters told him. He said, "Are you going to work?" He said, "Well, I might." He said, "Don't go." You know, a white boy told him not to go. 
We're so caught up in this eight hour slave trip that we can't see Lord of the Earth. Okay. Uh, we're going to work with Samskar and the Granthi. We're going to work with a technique that cannot be put on the camera. So at 7.30, I'm going to ask the sister to turn the camera away. This is an ancient yogi technique that belongs to a particular order. I don't have the right to make it public. So it won't be on the tape. If you want to use it, we'll push you to find out how to use it now. But I want you to come here and use it. I want you to meditate together. Compile your energy, your spirit, your love and compassion for one another. Something happens when you do that. That's important. Okay. Very important to, 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 to know what, what family is, is to see it from a spiritual level. We really are a family. But that's why you, you run up and, and hit somebody. Hey, Bobby. Oh, man, I thought you was Bobby. Man, I'm so. <laughs> How many times have we done that? We look alike. Because we're a family. We've got to start thinking like one another. Very important. The cell salt regenerates your blood as well as your chemistry and as well as your cell tissues. Very important. The whole body is a composition of tissues. So your cell salt helps you get back the composure that you're supposed to have. It heals stuff you don't even know about. Just like garlic. You take garlic and garlic heals stuff you don't even know about. As long as you take it, if something's getting done, you can bet on garlic as a healing process. But the cell salt is something unique. That, that, that's what you're a, you are a composition of. You're not a composition of garlic. <laughs> you are a composition of cell salt. All 12 of them. But each sign utilizes one particular cell salt, their own sun sign cell salt, more than any other, particularly as it mentioned here, particularly Leo. Because the high energy, and usually the, the violent temper, very, very, very passionate folks. <laughs> if once they master that temper, you know, they, they can raise that up to power. Because that's what it really is. What time is that? Okay. Any questions? Those three figures, which one's the uh, astral? The first one is always the astral. 